Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel where recently we hit a huge milestone. Just before Christmas, as I was watching the Muppets Christmas Carol, this little hobby channel reached over a hundred thousand subscribers. And as it was happening, I kind of couldn't believe it was real. Oh, time to cry. And now that it's been a week or two and I'm sat back in my studio, it still doesn't feel real. It feels really weird and strange, like, hello, all a hundred thousand of you plus. How are you doing? I hope you're good. I hope you're well. And I know it's really lame and cheesy and everybody always says this, but I swear to God it's true that if you sat me down this time a year ago and told me that everything was going to be okay and I'd have my own YouTube channel and that channel would have a hundred thousand subscribers, I wouldn't have believed you and I probably would have called your mum for a wee chat to be like, you're acting a little bit weird because it's just so fantastical. I don't know. It's crazy. And the focus of my content has never been and will never be about getting as many subscribers as I can. And I promise that I will keep making my weird, colourful, goblin, space marine videos despite what the algorithm says is good or not. But truly, this is an incredible and huge milestone for me to hit in just the first eight months of my solo career. So I just wanted to jump on here to say a huge thank you to everyone who's supported me here on YouTube or on Patreon or just anywhere in general. I couldn't have done it without you guys and I'm so grateful. So thank you, thank you. I love you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So whilst I wait for my silver YouTube plaque to get here, I thought we could have a little bit of fun and a bit of a celebration of this milestone. So the other day I opened up my inbox to you guys and invited you to ask me anything. And I have all of your burning questions here and I'm going to be answering them right now so that maybe all a hundred thousand and plus of you can get to know me a little bit better. Whoosh. Okay, I think we're gonna start with one that's been asked not only in this Ask Me Anything, but like everywhere a million times, which is where are you from and what is your accent? I can never work it out. Um, I am from Scotland. I was born in a little town called Dunfermline and my accent, I'm not, I'm not really sure. Um, I get told it sounds like it's from Fife and Dunfermline, but then people think it's American and then people think it's, I've been told, Australian and Irish and a bunch of other things. But I am from Scotland and I like to think my accent is maybe weird, chronically online Scottish. Let's, let's go with that. Another classic for any AMA is what is your favourite dinosaur? Um, I like tall dinosaurs, I like brachiosauruses, I like them in Land Before Time and Jurassic Park. The ones with the long necks are always my favourite. What got you into Warhammer? Um, that's a good question. I started painting Warhammer properly again about 10 years ago and it was just because some of my friends at the time had a leftover box of orcs and asked if I was interested and I was and I loved them very much and I've never stopped since. But I've always sort of painted models even before that. I used to do custom doll painting before I did Warhammer where you essentially get like a creepy doll and you take away its factory makeup and then you paint on a new face and that was something I really loved so the transition from doing that into Warhammer wasn't that strange and doing doll repainting is something I would quite like to pick up again and maybe I will in the future. This is another one that a few people asked which is who is your favorite hobby content creator and that's a really tricky question because a lot of them are my friends and I like them all very very much but I think from like an outside perspective being my friends aside I really love what Trent over on Miscast does. He comes up with such crazy ideas. I've seen him do it in real life and it's insane. I love the miniatures that he makes and I think his style of content creation is super watchable and engaging and fun and I'd like to be more like him when I grow up. Biggest red flag in a guy. Ooh, well I don't know about guys in general or anything but I think one of my biggest red flags for people and one of my biggest I think like icks in general is when you're talking about something and you're really excited and you're talking about something you love and you're all bubbly and you're getting excited and I don't know what else but then that person is like calm down 
calm down. And I don't know if you guys have ever been in that situation, but I have. And it just made me feel terrible. It made me feel awful and it made me feel guilty and ashamed for talking about the thing that I love. And like, we don't need that. If you're around people that make you feel bad for talking excitedly about the thing that you love, then just shoo them out your life because you can do better than that. So a few of these ones are quite similar and they kind of connect to each other. So I'm sort of gonna lump them in. Someone has asked, do I have any other hobbies apart from Warhammer? And the answer is yes, yes I do. My current big thing that I'm like hyper fixating on is sea glass collecting, which essentially means I go to a beach and I do some beach combing and I pick up little bits of glass that have been worn down by the sea and that's my current favorite thing to do. It's really good exercise, I get to go outside and I get to pick up little shiny gems and then I get to keep them like they're treasures at the end of the day and it's really good fun. But my main other hobby is music. I really like going to gigs and I really like making my own music and I've had a few questions about that. If you've watched any of my videos videos then you've probably already heard my music because I tend to use it in my outros and things like that and on my channel if you're interested in listening to more of my music there is a video where I have posted an hour-long compilation of some of my favorite songs I've made so if you're interested in that give that a listen and then someone's asked what is my favorite metal band of all time and that's a really tricky question. And I always struggle when people ask, what is your favorite of something? But I think my favorite band of all time is a band called Summoning. Summoning is a very chill and ambient black metal band who compose songs which are mainly about Middle Earth. And if you've never heard them before, I highly recommend you give them a listen. It's some of my favorite stuff to listen to while I'm painting. It's really chill, it's really epic, and I love them very much. I could do an entire video on just all of the music that I listen to but I don't have time to do that so if you're interested here's a list here you go do, 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 do. here's some of the bands I listen to yay what is your favorite paint no longer in production? That's an easy one because I always have it in front of me because I use it so often. It's titillating pink. It's got the best name. It's very saturated and fluorescent. It's super bright and great for edge highlighting. And I would really like it if G-Dubs brought it back. Thank you. Do you still have the first miniature you ever painted? I actually don't. I know where it is. It lives at my friend's house and it's an old mask of Slanesh. And I was really happy with it when I painted it, but I do have a bunch of the orcs that I painted when I first got into painting Warhammer and I'll fish them out and I'll pop a picture of them here so you can see them. These are some of my earliest miniatures, but I'm still proud of them. Did you have any formal training in fine art and design? Yes, I guess so. I went to art school in Aberdeen for about five years and I studied illustration and graphic design. What is your favorite paint line other than Citadel? Right now it's definitely Pro Acryl by Monument Hobbies. Um, not sponsored, but I really, really like them. It's been great discovering other paint ranges since I stopped having to use Citadel all the time. And um, they just cover really well. The colors are really good and they're super matte and they dry really nicely so definitely recommend picking up some pro acryl especially their bold titanium white it's the best white paint in the world ever trust me do you have any icks i really don't like mayonnaise freaks me out. What is your favorite art piece that you created that isn't a miniature? I really like this question. I don't know. It's either between a song that I really like, which is Nim. It's my favorite song that I've ever made. Or the map of the old world, which I spent a long time on and I'm really proud that it's still being used today. And this little picture of a goblin I did for Blood Bowl. He's not the best thing I've ever drawn, but I really like his face. He's got a little squid in his pocket and a hot dog and I just think he's neat. Are you into Warhammer Fantasy and what do you think about the upcoming release of the Old World? Ooh, yes, I am into Warhammer Fantasy. I really like Warhammer the Old World. I really like the lore and I really like the armies. I have an orc and goblin army myself that I need to like spruce up so that I can get ready for the game being re-released. I'm just very excited for it. I think it's super cool. But let me know if you guys are excited for it and I'd love to do some Old World videos on my 
my channel if that's the kind of thing you'd be interested in seeing. Let me know. Favorite color for power swords and plasma weapons. Um, for power swords, it's easy peasy. I definitely like prismatic power swords because I just think they look really pretty and it's really easy to paint. I recently though did a power sword that was purple and I'm really excited to show you guys that full project later. But for plasma weapons, I really like the non-canonical colors. I like green and I like neon pink because I just think they're really cool even though they're not necessarily canon. What's the mini you're least proud of? I have painted so many bad miniatures. I swear to God. Obviously, the miniatures that I post online and that I do videos on are not bad miniatures because I'm proud enough of them to put online, but I swear I have painted quite a few bad miniatures in my time. I especially struggle as always to paint metallics and I remember there was this one miniature. What was it? It was the Iron Blaster. It was the Ogre Iron Blaster and I remember I bought it for myself as a graduation present from me to me when I finished uni and I was so excited to paint it but then the metal went all wrong because I really struggled and then I decided to like cover it in moss and grass to make it look like it was old and in the jungle and I posted it online and I kind of got shamed for it and people didn't understand why I had covered it in grass and honestly they were right it didn't look very good so I took it away I removed all the silly bits of grass and it did look better after that but I remember being really disappointed in myself because I was really excited to paint that miniature and it didn't look great <gasps> this one's fun this one's a little bit spicy who do you think is the leaker of info at Games Workshop HQ. Ooh. So honestly, I don't think anybody knows. And when I worked there, nobody had any idea who it could be because someone on the inside is definitely leaking stuff to the outside. But yeah, no one knows who it is. But what I reckon is they're not happy with their job because if you're working at Games Workshop and you like your job and you're being treated correctly, you're probably not going to risk your career by leaking stuff to whoever on the outside. So I reckon whoever it is is probably not very happy with their job and maybe needs a pay rise and to be treated a little bit better. So it works for everyone. If they treat their employees better, maybe no one would leak anything either. But maybe they would. I don't know. That made it sound like it might have been me. It wasn't me, I promise. <laughs> Let's answer more Games Workshop questions because they're fun. Um, here's a good one. What's the juiciest gossip from your time at Games Workshop? So much. <laughs> I think the main one that I think everyone's heard is that a certain manager may or may not have punched somebody else in a car park and that's been just misconstrued and told so many times that now the rumor is that like i punched peachy <laughs> in the car park or like every time someone leaves games workshop they have to have a fight in the car park and that's like the best ending for that rumor ever but i think it started based on a genuine rumor that someone punched someone in the warhammer world car park I don't know who it was, <laughs> but that's the rumor. Do you think that someday you will want to explain why you left Games Workshop in a video or a stream? This is a question I get asked a lot and I kind of knew it was coming here, which is the, why did you leave Games Workshop? Obviously, something went wrong. <laughs> but every single time I think I want to talk about it, I feel so uncomfortable. And if I feel uncomfortable talking about it, it probably means it's not the right time for me to talk about it because I probably won't sleep that night and that's no good. So I don't know when it's going to be. Maybe in the future when it's been so long that I can laugh about it, or maybe if some other people start to speak up about similar issues, I will join in with their voices. But for now, I just want to paint nice goblins and have a good time on my channel. So I'm just going to do that for now. Oh, my light went out. Oh, oh no, I fixed it. 
Yay. <laughs> okay, the light's back on, which actually brings me onto our next question, which is relevant, which is, if you were to start doing this from scratch, knowing what you do now, would you have done anything differently? I think I would have. Knowing what I do now, I look back at my first video and the audio sucks and my light turns out halfway through and I was so proud of that video but now and it's only been eight months but I watch it back and I'm like how can anyone watch this my audio is out of sync and it's all very unprofessional but I think that's fine it was my first ever video and I'm still really proud of it and people still watch it to this day so I'm really happy with it but apart from just technical difficulties Difficulties, I think I just would have felt braver. I wish I felt braver. I was so, so scared making this channel and, and it really did impact my mental health. Being that scared, thinking nobody's gonna like me, no one's gonna watch my videos, how am I gonna do this? And it is hard, but you make things work. And I did make things work and I am proud of myself for that. And that's a big deal for me to say that in front of everybody. So I probably would have been a bit nicer to myself knowing what I do now, knowing that everything was going to be okay. I probably would have gone a little bit easier on myself. Hello, Louise. Do you have any hints as to the future of Rascal Town? Is there a TTRPG in the works? Ooh, that's exciting. Um, the future of Rascal Town. So as as you know, because you were here watching the video probably, I started Rascal Town as kind of an excuse for me to make one miniature and then it kind of spiraled out of control. I'm really pleased to say that as of this video being made, we have sold over a thousand Rascal Town goblins, which is another incredible milestone. And if you want to buy one, you can buy them now at my shop roguehobbies.com. But as far as the future of Rascal Town, I'm not sure. We are definitely going to be making more goblins. In fact, I have the next one that I'm to paint right here. So very excited for that. And um, apart from that, yes, we are looking at producing a Rascal Town game, obviously. I don't know when that's going to be. I don't know how that's going to look. But I guess watch this space and this channel, because if I do, I will definitely be making a series of videos about it. What are the best tips you have for painting tiny details. I'm not gonna tell you that right now because that is going to be the subject for a whole video I'm gonna be doing this month and I am very excited to share that video with you. So check back this month for some tiny painting tips. So this was quite a common one and I'm just gonna read this one out but a lot of them were similarly phrased and it's people asking what are some tips for people who also might want to become an influencer? I got asked by this kid recently who wanted to be a YouTuber how to become a YouTuber and I kind of just told him you have to really really want to do it. Um, I, I don't sleep half as much as I used to when I was in a nine till five. I work all hours of the day. I'm up to like one o'clock in the morning editing videos and painting and writing scripts and stuff like that. But I love it. I do it because I love it. And I think the main kind of advice I would give people who want to be in the same industry is make sure that you are just obsessed with it. Make sure you love it and you're willing to put that extra effort in because you love it and not because you feel like you're forced to or else it'll just start crumbling around you. I make these videos because I really want to make them and I'm lucky enough to have an audience that also wants to watch them. So thank you guys as well. Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Yes. How do you get over painting anxiety? I think painting anxiety is different for different people. Some people are scared to post their work. Some people are scared to even start. And some people are scared to complete a miniature if it's not going well. For me, painting anxiety is being scared that what I'm painting isn't good enough or what I'm painting isn't better than my last miniature. I really struggle with that. 
And the way I personally deal with that anxiety is just by overexposure. I will challenge myself, I'll set myself challenges, I'll keep practicing, I'll do another miniature if my last one wasn't good enough. I am very motivated to just keep trying and if I'm proud enough of something then I try to focus on that achievement and maybe not that it's not my best work. I try to focus that I've done something that makes me happy and I've improved on something even though it's not the best thing I've ever done, it's still a step in the right direction. What was your first art Army in Warhammer. My first ever army was my 40k snakebite orcs and to this day I love them very much. I spent loads of time converting them and painting them. They're a little bit sporadic because I painted them at various ability levels in my life but I have about a 3k fully painted 40k orc army and I love them very much. Which Primark would you date and why? I really like Fulgrim, um, I think he's really pretty and he has really nice hair and he could probably do my eyeliner better than I could and apart from that I, I like Ferris Manus, I'm not gonna tell you why. Real talk, favourite Bionicle. Ooh, I have so many favourites. I think my favourite ones were like, remember the ones that you could like roll into a ball and they had the jabby jabby heads? That one was my favourite. I had the brown one and he was my favourite. How many new rascals are we getting this year? At least three, I think. And I think we're gonna finish with a good kind of rounding off question, which is what are your plans for 2024? I'm not very good at making plans or resolutions and keeping to things like that. So I think my plan for 2024 is just gonna be to try my best to enjoy my first full year of being myself, doing my own thing and having my own channel. I wanna make so many videos and I already have like a bunch of ideas in my brain that I can't wait to get out of my brain and show you guys here on this channel. I wanna do more lore videos, look at different game systems, different games. I want to go places and meet new people and possibly even develop my own miniature game myself. But most importantly, this year, as with any year, what I want to do the most is just share my love for the hobby with you guys and kind of see where that takes us. So once again, I just want to thank you so much for being here for the journey so far. And as always, thank you for being rogues. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye bye.